In this video, we're going to cover hotkey and other controller settings within XPSX 2.0. After getting XPSX 2.0 installed, there are a number of settings that you can mess with, and a couple of those are hotkeys and controller settings. Setting up hotkeys is great because it lets you access a number of emulator features right from your controller without having to navigate menus, and then some games just might not have controls that you like, and you want to ma manually remap them to something else. And XPSX 2.0 lets you do both, and in this video we'll cover some of those options. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, this guide is a continuation of my XBSX 2.0 install guide. So if you haven't gotten XBSX 2.0 installed yet and would like some help on that, a link to this guide will be in the description below for you to follow. Get XBSX 2.0 installed, get your game set up, get your bio set up, and then you can continue along with this guide to get hotkeys and other controller settings configured. But once set, just go ahead and get booted into XBSX 2.0 and head down to the settings tab. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and cover hotkeys first. So just press the right bumper on your controller until you get to the hotkey settings menu here. And our first option is to open our in-game menu. This is defaulted to back and start at the same time, which I think is a good one. If you wanna change it, you could do so. Next, if you plan on using retro achievements, you could set a open retro achievements list hotkey. So I wanna set this one to uh, let's go ahead and set this one to back and left bumper. So I'm just going to do that right there. So now in game, if I press back and left bumper at the same time, it will bring up my achievements list. So that way I can more easily access it. And then the same thing can be done with leaderboards list. I don't really care about that one a whole lot. You can pause your emulation, toggle the frame limit, toggle your fast forward button. I want to do this one real quick. I'm going to set this one to back and right trigger. So it matches kind of what you see on Steam Deck. Slow motion, I'm not going to uh, be using this one since I use hardcore mode achievements, but you could set one for that. If you wanted to just hold your hotkeys to make your emulation go and fast forward instead of it being a toggle, that option is available here as well. Then we have options for increasing target speed, decreasing target speed, increasing in-game and decreasing in-game volume, muting audio, frame advancing, shutting down the virtual machine, resetting emulation can record inputs, save state options. These ones are really nice. I like to use these one on D-pad whenever I am doing save states, but you can set them to whatever floats your boat. A lot of save state options, as you can see. Next, you have the ability to save a screenshot if you would like. So actually, I wanna put this one on back and right bumper. There we go. Video capture. And this one is actually really nice. Toggle software rendering. So there are a number of games that have to be run in software mode if you wanna get the full graphical feature set. So for this one, I'm going to make this um, back and right D-pad. There we go. And then you can increase and decrease your upscaling. So I like to put these ones on up and D-pad up, and then up and D-pad down so that way I can cycle through them at will. And then aspect ratio, this one could come in handy as well. So I'm gonna put that one on start and D-pad left, or back and D-pad left rather. And then other graphical features you can mess with like deinterlacing mode, hardware mip mapping, texture dumping, and texture replacements. But I think that's gonna do it for my personal preferences here as far as hotkeys are concerned. All right, so here we are in Metal Gear Solid 3. So just a quick example of some of the hotkeys I set. We had um, fast forward here by pressing back and right trigger. So that enables fast forward mode. So you can see now we're running in fast forward and it's uh, working great. Next we had toggle the achievements menu here with um, back and left bumpers. So there we go. Now I can see all my locked and unlocked retro achievements. Screenshot. And now for our Resolution scaling here, so back button being my toggle key is terrible for Metal Gear Solid, but that's all right. So there we go, we can set the upscale multiplier. And you can see it just sort of take effect here as the grass gets sharper. Of course, the higher the resolution you upscale it to, the more demanding it's gonna be on the GPU. But it's pretty fun to watch that change in real time, like the grass blades just get so much more crisp. And then of course we had the software renderer mode. So Metal Gear Solid's a good example to showcase this one because the shadow effects aren't right in the hardware renderer under DirectX 12. So if we change over to software mode, hold on, let me get out of the codec here, or the radio rather. 
There we go. So we changed the software mode. You can see that the shadows are now proper, but we are unfortunately stuck to um, a native internal resolution, but it's cool to see it happen in real time like that. And then of course I set the aspect ratio here as well, so I can set auto aspect ratios, force aspect ratios, so cool stuff. But that's gonna do it as far as hotkey settings are concerned. Set them up to your personal preferences, set up the ones that you know you're gonna be using. I do recommend having an activator like the back or start button in all of your hotkeys, otherwise you're gonna be interfering with yourself in game. But there are a lot of options that you are able to select here, which makes it very, very handy. But now let's go ahead and take a focus on controls. So by default, XBSX 2.0 is set up to work with one player games only out of the box. And that's fine. Let's go ahead and talk about control settings for your single player games. So heading back down to the settings tab, press the right bumper to head over to the controls tab here. And you'll notice right off the bat, we have a couple of uh, reset settings and then save and loading profiles. These will come in handy if you want to have per game control setups. Next, we have a couple of multi-tap options. We'll cover that here in a bit, but head down to controller port one and the controller type is going to be a DualShock 2. That means that it is connected. If it says not connected, you need to change it over to DualShock 2. Next, we have the ability to automatically map our buttons to match PlayStation default controls by choosing our Xbox controller. Controller zero is your player one. So you can just map all of your buttons automatically to player one here. And then you can cycle through the controls and see that they match up to what a PlayStation would expect map to your Xbox controller. Now one control setting that you might be interested in is this apply pressure button here. So for games that require pressure sensitivity options, you can set a key combo to apply a certain amount of pressure according to a modifier you could set below. So I'm just going to set this one to back and right click in. So I'm just gonna select it and back and right stick click. That way in game, if I press those buttons and hold them, every button that I press will apply the pressure modifier. But again, more on that in a bit. So once we get past all of our controller bindings, we get into macro settings. So these will be interesting to those of you that are interested in this sort of thing, but you can set a trigger for certain macros. So if you wanted to set like A, B as a macro. Then you could select which PlayStation buttons those are pressing as you activate that macro. You can set if it auto toggles every certain frames. So you can press A to change the frame number here. And then you can apply how much pressure is on those buttons as they are pressed. And you have 10 macros available, or no, 16 macros available, my mistake. So there's a lot of combinations that you could pull off here depending on your needs. But once you get past the macro settings, this is where things get a little more interesting. So XBSX 2.0 includes the options to invert your right or left thumbsticks. So by default, a number of games would be inverted. And a lot of people didn't like that. The controls were not customizable, so you couldn't uninvert them. So you could then invert the stick along either axis to um, overcome that option. Also works great for inverted horizontal camera movements in certain games. And again, you can apply that to either stick. Next, we can set our analog dead zone. Really recommend leaving this one at zero unless you're having some extreme stick drift. And then analog sensitivity, it's set to 133 by default in XBSX 2.0, and this has felt really good to me so far, so I haven't really felt the need to change it. Next, you can set trigger dead zones. So if your triggers are activating a little too soon, you can turn on a bit of a dead zone to make it so they aren't and then sensitivity as well. Next, you can set the rumble strength for both of your rumble motors. And then finally, button dead zones. Well, these are digital buttons, um, so it doesn't really matter for this controller, for Xbox controllers, but this is more of a PC thing. But finally, here is that modifier pressure setting that we were talking about earlier. So if you set the hotkey up here for apply pressure, the modifier for the pressure sensitivity is going to be set right here. So you can change this to any value you wish. And after you modify your controller settings, if you want to save them as a profile, you could do so here. You just click on it, create a new profile, type in a name for it using the on-screen keyboard, and then tell it to create. And then you can load profiles as well. 
So you can set up custom controller configurations for every single game if desired. Personally, I've been okay just using normal default PlayStation 2 controls in most games, but I know there are a couple of games that I would change controls on, I just haven't been playing them. But now let's go ahead and discuss multiplayer gameplay. So, again, like I said, XBSX 2.0 is set up for one player games by default, so if you want to enable two player multiplayer, you just need to scroll down past all the player one options here and get to controller port two. Now from here, make sure you have another Xbox controller hooked up, otherwise you're gonna not really be able to play much multiplayer because you don't have two controllers. But give me a second here to plug in another controller. All right, there we go. All right. So to enable controller port two, go to controller type here and change it to a DualShock 2. And now select the automatic mapping and choose your second player controller. So this is going to be X input controller number one and it will map all of the buttons to correspond to their PlayStation equivalents. But you can go through and set any of the controls as you see fit, just like you did on port one, any macros, and then of course the stick sensitivities, dead zones, vibration, pressure modifiers, and all that. But let's give a quick gameplay demo here of two player games in action. All right, so here we are, 007 Nightfire. I'm running away from one of the built-in bots right here with player one right now because they're gonna kill me. Oh no, they're gonna kill me. Ah. Oh well, i really bad. These controls are not to my liking. But anyway, let's go ahead and start moving player two around as well. Oh gosh, I can't, I cannot, I cannot do both at once. I'm so uncoordinated. Oh, this is bad. Oh gosh, he's gonna kill me again. But as you can see, two players support uh, working as intended. Now let's talk about four players and greater, I guess. But anyway, back at the controller settings, let's talk about the multi-tap settings here. So you can enable a multi-tap on port one or port two or both at the same time to allow up to eight players in games that support it. So sports games are usually the only ones that supported eight players. But for today's video example, I'm going to enable a multi-tap on controller port two here. That way we could get four player games going in games like 007 Nightfire. So scrolling past controller port one, we can see that controller port two has been changed over to controller port two A. So if we scroll past all the options in controller port two A here, we will get to controller port two B. And as you can see, it's not connected by default. So we just need to enable that by switching it over to a DualShock two. Now make sure that you have your three or four controllers connected to your Xbox that you want to use for four player multiplayer. So under automatic mappings, this is controller port 2B, so this is player three, so that's gonna be X input controller number two. So again, the automatic mapping just maps it one to one with PlayStation, but you could go through and manually configure things as desired as with the other controller ports. Set macros, set sensitivities and inversions and other things like that. And then we could do the same thing with controller port 2C, switch it over to a DualShock 2, automatic mapping, so this is number four, so we're gonna do X input controller three here. And now it is set as well with default settings. Again, change things as you see fit. It's personal preference on how you want them to be mapped. You can set macros, and then the uh, sensitivities and things like that. But, with player port one and then three players on the multi-tap for port two. Let's go ahead and showcase it running in game. All right, so it looks like I screwed up a bit and it actually wants the multi-tap and controller port one, which is fine. We'll go ahead and fix that real quick. All right, now we should be good to go. There we go, yay. All right, so here we are, four player split screen on 007 Nightfire using the multi-tap in port one. The example didn't go quite as uh, seamlessly as I had hoped, but as you can see, all the player ports are able to move. So we got player one, player two here. Here's player three, and then player four. So you are able to enjoy multiplayer games that can use more than four or two players. Now, as a fun little extra for anyone interested in using like official DualShock 2 controllers or other Sony controllers, you could get something like the Brook Wingman 2 here. Hook it up to your Xbox Series X and S connect something like a DualShock 2 to USB cable, and then hook up PlayStation-style controllers up to it. So for my example today, I have the Retro Fighters Defender receiver, 
just because I don't have a DualShock 2 available at the moment. But it'll work with all DualShock 2s as well. But then you can just plug it into your Series S, and the controller is already mapped one-to-one -one with Xbox controllers, making it perfect for PS2 emulation. Quick example there, so we got that. And now I've got my Defender PS2 version. And there we go, it is now connected up to my Xbox. I have no other Xbox controllers plugged in, so this is gonna be my player port one. So here we go, so... Perfect. Now, unfortunately, we don't get access to driver level pressure sensitive buttons if we're using this on Xbox with the Brook adapter, but I mean, it still gives us a more authentic feeling PS2 gaming experience to use official controllers or controllers like the Defender. So, just a little fun extra you could do if you are interested. But that's gonna do it for our hotkeys and controller settings overview for XBSX 2.0. There's a lot you're able to accomplish when you spend some time in the control settings, and you can really fine tune the experience into something more tailor-made for your playing styles. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative and it helps get your XBSX 2.0 projects up and running to your desires. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like today's video as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little really does go a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current baggers. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are all the truest of champs, and we would not be able to do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, let us know your favorite PS2 games down in the comments below, and we'll see you back next video.